Welcome back to the channel. I'm Peter Mokri, a Dallas-based DP photographer, gaffer with a one-ton grip van, full of aperture lighting. Needs a little work still, but we'll get there in the next week or so. On this episode, we're gonna go over two things. First of all, how I clean my lenses in preparation for a shoot. Also, we're gonna feature the van from the last episode, the two-ton that was loaded up with those awesome carts. We're gonna get the full van tour in this episode. And people have said, man, once you get a Mercedes, you're gonna change. Nothing's really changed. I don't know what they're talking about. And before we get into it, next week, September 7th, we have our first meetup with the Dallas Producers Association and Grace Point Media. It will be in front of a 40-foot LED wall inside of their studio. It, the event is called Grin and Beer It. Details below. Be sure to make it out. Lens cleaning time. Here's one of the methods I use to clean up my lenses. I don't clean my lenses on a regular basis because I don't want to introduce scratches from cleaning them every single day over and over and over again. It's similar to cars and car washes. If you go to the car wash every week, constantly nonstop, your finish is not going to last as long. So I'm very cautious on how often I clean my lenses and I don't let anyone else touch them. I don't let someone just come up, run up to my camera and start trying to mess with my lenses, pull out that nasty, dirty, microfiber cloth that they've had that it's traveled the world it's been to egypt it's been to australia it's been to you know uh death valley and it's collected all the sand and then they get it and they go oh yeah let me just scratch that up for you i hate that no it's not happening so first thing is uh what introduces dust a lot of time to your regular lenses is your lens cap so make sure it's clean so i'm going to move the lens out of the way and what i use is i'll get detailing brushes they're not the best things in the world. They're, you know, pretty crappy, but they're cheap and the bristles are stiff on it. So I'll go in and kind of move it around and, and get stuff knocked loose. You want to point down when you can to knock stuff loose. But yeah, just shuffle around in there. You could come in with your blower. So this is a rocket blower by Giddos. Uh, the off-brand ones are very stiff. So if you see this, this is really soft if you get an off-brand one which i've fallen for it if you look at this it's it's like hard as a rock doesn't want to move easily doesn't do as good of a job so don't get the knockoffs get the real ones and you could pump them real fast versus this it's not as good uh the bigger one you go with the more pressure you're going to get out of it because you can pump a lot more air through it so that's something to think about. So yeah, I knock loose anything I have. And this is the blower I use all the time. So that's not an issue. So we have the cap, it's pretty cleaned up. I'm gonna set it off to the side. Now we're gonna look at the lens. So if you look closely, you can see just below the 0.8 meter mark, there's dust there and there's dust in other places. And then the outside of the lens could be dusty as well. So what I like to do is again, use the detailing brush get into the cracks that i normally can't get into or the blower doesn't want to do anything with and clean it up and then i'll want to clean up uh this is a ring for my mat box so i'll go in there clean it up dust it off i don't use this on the lens itself it will scratch do not use a brush that is not designed for lenses on the glass i wouldn't recommend using brushes at all as much as possible because they do hold static and will hold debris on there and end up scratching it. So that's done there. And now I'm gonna give it a little rocket blow, see what we can remove. Kind of go all the way around. Do not use super pressurized air because you could force stuff into the lens. And yes, these aren't perfectly sealed. so. You can pour stuff into it. So that's what we look like now. You can still see some debris. So this is what I use to clean my lenses. Why do I use these? It's the Zeiss wipes, lens cleaning wipe. Why do I use it? It's, it's a sealed wipe. Uh, you get a box of like 100, 500, 200. There's various uh, ones. 
I use this because it's sealed. One time use. I use it on the lens. I throw it out. I use it, throw it out. Use it, throw it out. I don't use it, stick it in my pocket and use it again and use it again and use it again and use it again. That's where you create issues and you start collecting dust. And because if I'm wiping this lens off and I get all that crud off of there and then I bring it to another lens, I have all that crud on there to scratch it. I do not trust that. So I'm going to open this guy up, show you a little trick. So it comes like this, fold it up. I open it up. I'm going to set the lens off to the side. So I open it up like this. And it's has uh, it's going to be moist. It's a moist towelette. It's almost like the little alcohol ones you get sometimes to wipe off your hands. So it's it's going to be a little wet. And depending on how old it is, it could dry out a little bit more. But I just shake them around to get them to dry off more and get them to where they're not going to leave too much residue or streaks on the glass. So shake, 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 shake. And again, I'm going to show a close up of the lens so you can see all the crud on there. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to work my way from the middle of the lens. They always say work your way from the middle. So you could wrap this around your finger. You could wrap it up into a little ball. Um, and I am going to work my way from the center light pressure you don't need to press really hard and work my way out to the outside and the reason they tell you to do that is uh dust accumulates in the edges if you start from the outside and you go in you could draw stuff in so i use this portion of it now i'm going to flip it around and bury that portion so i have another fresh piece i'm going to do it one more time i'm going to hold this close to me so i could look at it as i do it Sometimes you may have to apply a little more pressure if you have any spots that are really being stubborn. Otherwise, it's really simple. And sometimes this uh, wipe will give you a little bit of dust, but now look at this. See all the spots are gone? Don't look at that one spot that looks like it's inside. It could be a reflection. But anyways, nice and clean, ready to go. Don't do this every day. Always resort to a duster first and then move on and, you know, be careful not to damage your glass. And there's a few other methods I use. Um, there's some uh, lenses that I've gotten, vintage lenses. Uh, I used to be a, um, a dealer of antique, uh, vintage and antique cameras. So I would use old get lenses that were sitting like this in a garage covered in dust. And I had methods of removing that dust without scratching uh, and dealing with certain things and uh, dealing with fungus and everything. But yeah, that, I mean, it's nice and clean now. So then we have our dusted cap ready to go. Put that guy on there and we're done with it. All right, guys, this is Ryan Mitchell over here with his innovative grip van. Innovative grip van. It's a two ton scenario. He's running the Mercedes Benz 170 extended high roof, which is a 3500 with XD. the dually wheels in the back, the XD. All right, show us what you got. I got this fancy remote. I wirelessly lets the lift guy down. All the. Uh... All the gaffers love that in town. <clears throat> Pop these doors open, and you'll notice uh, there's a there's a hole in the back here. Well, that that conveniently fits a uh, a Fisher 10 or Fisher 11 dolly, so that we can still fit a Fisher in in case you still need uh, that. We don't have to give up the whole grip truck rental just to bring you a dolly. So I've got uh, my 4x4 card on the left, nice straps in, completes the aisle, Titan tubes, the Astera is the uh, 8 tube kit on the left, got my 8x uh, and 6x uh, Hollywood frames that are just tossed up there at the moment, 8x ladder, room for a 6x ladder, got a whole bunch of foam core, got some uh, 
uh, four by four shiny boards. Actually got some dolly track on the bottom. Got uh, shot bags, about uh, 400 pounds of shot. Then uh, we go in and. and so the, I got a uh, question for you. So how many times has camera department used this space when moving locations? Well, you know, the thing is that if we don't have a Fisher dolly, it comes real handy that uh, whether it's the DIT or the camera or AC or the camera car, whoever it is, when we're, oh, hey, we're just going to move over to a, uh, a new location, you know, we can just, hey, uh, just toss that loaded cart instead of breaking it down and go right into the van. That way uh, we can move quick. We don't have to break down and we go from there. So, you know, then uh, I've got uh, a couple different carts, but uh, the two main cart, the, uh, the does all and the lighting cart. And it, uh, let me uh, go ahead and, and pop this cart stop so uh, nobody dies over here. Oh, that's nice. It rolls. And then, oh, that's uh, cool. You, you have to use your hands on the uh, uh, Tommy gate. Yeah. To get that to click. This just rolls with your foot. So then I can just bring this guy out. And then it comes out. I'm just going to give me a little cheat here. That way it doesn't go all the way to the end. And then I can hold it. I've got all my stuff here. So it's a wireless controller? Yeah, so completely wireless. It, uh, it's super nice for when you're on the other side of the, the, uh, the gate and you're trying to operate it yourself. You can keep it in whichever hand you like and then you can go up or down with it. Got all this. And then I got a custom head cart for all my lights on the inside, which we can see from the side door. But uh, I got a couple generators on the side. Got a couple milk crates. We got uh, got two out for inventory right now. But uh, the rest, all the, the custom milk crates that fit inside with all the different things. Got some extra stingers in here. Got some grip clips always coming in handy. Got uh, four and a half inch lollipops. Got uh, ballast to a 1200. There's a uh, hiding behind the, uh, the lighting cart. The head cart is uh, an M18 and Little insert here showing off the HMI cart. Got the M18 down here, 1200 over here, 1200 and scrims and stuff here. Two Jalico adapters. Got lenses for the two 1200s and one of the 1200 ballasts. The other 1200 ballast is over there in the milk crate. And like I mentioned, the speed rail in the, the trough up here with a Fernie pad keeping it a little bit quiet. Got some more Fernie pads, got some random sash cords, safeties, other rope and things like that to keep things quiet. Here's that roll of duvetine. And then it just slots right in underneath the shelf and it pulls right out. And you got a little extra room over here by the generators for when it's needed. These carts come right out and makes it real nice and handy. Make sure to get your cart brakes on. Toss on your safety strap. Tighten that guy up. Take a nice little elevator ride all the way down to the bottom. I'm gonna pop into the side door here. Got you a couple rolling stands a couple oh, nice. medium rollers got some quasar tubes pelicans some extra non-wheeled combos got four combos and four babies on the light cart everything to hold four light panel one by ones and four light panel two by one gemini soft so this cart you roll out you have the stands you have the lights yeah power stands lights everything that you need for this light cart that then, way this this cart is self-sustaining and if then, you need light, you got modifiers of everything on this cart. It's all you need if you need light. Okay, so it's just self-sufficient, so yeah. you could just get that out there you and bring it's ready to go. Bring your all that way you need, you know, stands and you need grip and you need hardware and everything else. That's that's your does all. It's got most of a little bit of everything to make rigging happen, stands happen, support happen. And then you bring out your light cart, 
And if you need lights, then you got the, the stands that you need for those lights. You got the modifiers you need for those lights. You got the barn doors. You got everything you need for the lights. So you're not having to fish somewhere else. And then, then you uh, got rags all in here. Yeah, so I got rags up here. I got six by eight by 12 bys. I got room for 12 bys. If I put the, the quasar somewhere else, that's easy. I got uh, hiding behind my, uh, my ND gel uh, water bottle here is uh, I got some gels hiding back here. Even got a little inverter power running back here in case I need to charge a DeWalt drill or something like that. You know, and then I got a little bit of duve roll up here in case I need to do a little bit of negative. I can adjust that. Like I said, I got all that, uh, that dolly track back here. And I even got a couple toolboxes of, of some tools and expendables and stuff like that in case anything goes wrong. I can self repair some stuff right here. And then a uh, little hard to see the, the head cart back there. I'll get you a photo that you can drop in that you can really see what's back there. But it's uh, uh, two Joker 400s. I have a Joker 800 we can add to that. Uh, two 1200 uh, pars, an M18, um, and a couple of Joe Lico adapters with the, uh, uh, the Source 4 Lico tubes that you can trade those out in case you need some Joe Lico help there. Um, that cart comes out just like one of these other carts, wheels out of the wall, comes off on set, you're good to go. And above that, across the whole back, is all my speed rail. Four foot, six foot, eight foot, 12 foot, whatever you need. And if you really need to do something with a 20 foot rail or something like that, we can join you know, a 12 and an eight together, make something happen. Obviously you can't use that for a day and a dollar or something like that, but you can at least get a T-bar or something if you need to, to cover something up or hang a, hang a little bit of diffusion. So, and more, most importantly, in case stuff goes really wrong, gotta have a fire extinguisher. Awesome. Especially carrying the fuel and the generators. So you've got the longest, one. Yeah, so this is physically the largest sprinter that you can get. And it has, it's upfitted with diamond plate all inside, has diamond the shelves plate built and in. insulation. This thing is, is actually cooler on the inside than the outside, even when it's 110 outside. Okay, so here's the next question. You just invested in another unit. Yep. And what, just sneak peek wise, what's being built and why are you getting a smaller unit as well? So this thing's great. This is, this is a grip truck. It's purpose built to be a grip truck. But what it's not is it's not anything besides that one purpose. So this is everything that you need for support, for light, for, you know, for stands, for modifiers, for everything like that, you know, to do Dana dollies and track and things like that. Well, that's all it is. You know, if, if I need camera, if I need audio, if I need something else, this, this doesn't flex to do that. You know, this cart is everything that I need for support, but it's not one or two lights. You know, it's not one or two lights, one or two stands, this or that. You know, I, I can't toss a camera on one of these carts. You can't toss some audio on one of these carts. This is perfect built. So this is never meant for a one man band. Yeah, so this, this doesn't flex. This is built for one purpose and one purpose only. And when you try to do anything besides that one purpose, it doesn't do it that well. It's built for one purpose and it can do a lot with it. If you need to toss you know, some monitors, if you need to toss some extra stands, if you need to toss you know, a camera card or something like that on there, you can. But it's, as soon as you expect this to be the, the flexible you know, oh, I can, I can shoot a whole documentary, I can have all my camera in there, and I can have all my audio in there and all that stuff. This isn't it. You know, when you get too big, too specific on a specific thing, then it's not flexible, so. And the, it's a uh, little harder to park. Like, there's yeah. my new van right there, and it fits in one spot, and that's the length you got on your new one, and you went with the right. short one to fit in parking yeah. garages as well. Right, you know, a little bit of drive-throughs, you know, at late at night, sometimes you get a little bit screwed by your food options. So I want to be able to get into garages. I want to be able to go through drive-throughs. You know, I want to be able to be flexible in what I'm having to do, especially if I'm having to do a long haul uh, to get there and to be able to have some options because I'm pulling in 30 minutes after that town closed. You know, not every town is open till 10 o'clock for dinner, most places. Some of these places, like I just got back from the Northeast, everywhere closes at 8.30, some nine. If you're really lucky, one spot's open till 10. 
and they close the bar or they close the the uh, the kitchen at 9:30. All right. So let's get your uh, uh, company name drops so everyone knows where to find you. Yeah. So I'm operating this truck under Innovative Grip Co. Uh, 